you have two companies. Company A, revenues, $20 per year. Company B, revenues, $20 per year. Which one is worth more? It depends. That's what this video is about. So in today's video, I will talk about how to value revenues, how to think about evaluation, and we're going to use an example of Tattooed Chef, and then we'll bring in some comparison for Voxter. If you are new to this channel, my name is Mariusz Skonieczny. I run Microcap Explosions, a website dedicated for microcap stocks, which are hated and ignored by the investment community. I also wrote 10 books on investing, one of which is available for a free download at microcapexplosions.com. So make sure you get yourself a copy. Tattooed Chef has been a popular stock among growth investors. I've seen some people talk about it. The stock has been coming down a bit. It's actually quite a bit under pressure recently. So I wanted to talk about the company a little bit and tell you whether I think that the valuation still makes sense, whether the valuation makes sense in the past so that we can learn how to be better investors. For those of you that don't know, Tattooed Chef makes plant-based food and it sells its food through a network of grocery stores in more than 4,000 retail locations. The trend of people consuming this kind of foods is on the rise. More people want to eat this kind of food. So definitely, definitely as a group, this is a growing industry. Not too long ago, Tattooed Chef's stock was close to 30 bucks. Today, it's approaching $10. Today's market cap is about a billion dollars. So back then, when the stock was approaching $30, you can say it was close to $3 billion. The company's revenues in 2019 were 85 million. In 2020, there were about 150 million. So you can see it's growing. And based on the most recent nine months, I would say the run rate is over 200 million. So the company is growing. It's growing fantastically. Its products are being offered through more and more stores. Now, does a company like this deserve a valuation of 1 billion? What it is today? And most importantly, did it ever deserve the valuation of 3 billion, close to 3 billion that it had not too long ago? So let's think about this for a second. Without looking whether something is overvalued or undervalued, let's just think about, is this a good business? Is this something that I wanna own no matter what, forget the growth, forget the hype, forget the popularity. Do I really want to own this business? As I said at the beginning, $20 of revenue for one company versus $20 of revenue for one company, it could be completely different things. Tattooed Chefs sells its products to retail locations. So it sells the products wholesale to retailers. Retailers mark it up and then they sell it to the end client. If you look at the company's margins, in 2019, it made 85 million in revenues. The gross margin was only $14 million. In other words, the gross profit margin was 16%, one six. In 2020, on revenues of 149 million, the gross profit was 24 million, which represents 16% gross profit margin. In the nine months, of 2021, the gross profit margin declined to about 13%. So think about this. For every $10 in revenues, only about $1.3 is gross profit. And then from that, you have to pay the marketing, the sales, right? Everything as GNA. So is this a great business? Well, it is a business, but the margins are low low margins, right? It's a low margin business. It's not like Adobe that margins are fantastic. It's a software business. The margins are like sky high. This is a low margin business. So if you have a high margin business versus a low margin business, the high margin business is better. The high margin business deserves a higher valuation. Those kinds of businesses deserve high valuations high revenue multiple valuations because they are high quality revenues. Tattooed Chef's revenues are not high quality revenues. And even today, the company is trading 
at five times revenues and it was trading at 15 times revenues. If we are just talking about the quality of revenues or moat, what kind of revenues are good? Recurring revenues are better than non-recurring revenues. Revenues where clients have switching costs are better than revenues where clients don't have any switching costs. Revenues that come because of some kind of network effect. In other words, when more people are using something, more other people want to be using something. That's what moats are. That's what Warren Buffett described as moats. You can have a moat from brand, you can have a moat from network effect, switching costs, economies of scale. Does Tattooed Chef have any sort of moat? I don't think so. It has a brand. Yeah, okay, it has a brand, but brand is only a moat when the brand generates competitive advantage, which brings high returns on equity, high returns on assets, and high margins. At this point, we don't know what kind of returns on assets or equity we get from Tattooed Chef because the company is losing money, which is okay. It's normal for growth companies to be losing money. But when you look at the margins, gross profit margins, there is no indication of any moat. There is tremendous competition in the space. And as more people want to be eating this kind of food, there will be more and more competition. And when I shared this website with my girlfriend who does all the shopping. He said, oh, the shelf space at the retail stores is like a revolving door. You constantly have new products coming in. So it's easy to replace those kinds of players. So there's no switching costs, right? And also from the point of view of people that are eating the food, I mean, there's no, no switching costs there either. You can switch from one food to another. Is there any network effect? Well, more people eating this food are more people want to eat this food? No, not really. There's no network effect. Is there any economies of scale? Well, economies of scale have to be compared to the competitors. There's plenty of companies out there that can make this kind of food and will be making more of this kind of food. So Tattooed Chef doesn't have any competitive advantage when it comes to economies of scale against the big competitors. But I'm not talking about this company to bash the company. No, this is a fact that Tattooed Chef's business model is just average. The margins are low, there's no moat, the quality of the revenue st stream is not that great. Yes, there's repetitive buying because you, know, you have to eat three times a day, so there is repetitive uh, revenues. So that's great, it's almost like a recurring revenues. But now, if the revenues for Tattooed Chef are low quality revenues and the business model is just average or below average, does it deserve a valuation that you would give to Adobe, for example, or some software company that has 70 or 80% profit margins, huge returns on assets, huge returns on equity and are growing? Well, no, a company like this doesn't deserve a high valuation. And unfortunately, people, growth investors, especially on NASDAQ, they're drinking the growth Kool-Aid. As long as the company is growing, they're willing to pay any price for it without even thinking about, well, do I even want to own this business? It's kind of like, do you want to have this baby? Well, yeah, because it's growing. But well, what if the baby is going to grow up ugly? Do you still want it? Oh, never thought about it. Well, just because a company is growing doesn't mean you should own it. Do you want this company as it is? Do you want it to be whatever it's going to be when it grows up. And for the right valuation, I'm not opposed to owning below average businesses as long as I don't overpay for them. The last thing I want is to pay a lot of money or overpay for a business that's just average. If I am going to buy an average business, I better have a low price attached to it to compensate for the fact that the business is not that great to begin with. If you compare Tattooed Chef with a company that I talk about on this channel, for example, Voxter. And if you haven't seen my videos on Voxter, watch my playlist, 11 videos on Voxter. Voxter is in the business. It's a technology company. It is improving a real estate appraising process and real estate title process. So it serves a very important function. It has a technology that improves that process. Now, that business, according to the most recent financials, 
generates about 45 gross profit margin. But that's masking the true profitability of that business because of the acquisition that they made recently. The margins are going to be between 70 and 80%. Now, 70, 80% for Voxter, 13, 14% for Tattooed Chef. Which revenues are more quality? Of course, Voxter. When somebody signs up on Voxter's platform, the switching costs are really strong. They make Voxter's business part of their operations. So once they sign up, they're not going anywhere for at least 20 years. The competition is very limited because there's not a lot of competition in appraising or title space for the technology. There's a lot of competition for selling homes. So Voxter is competing in an area where it's not that competitive and it has a dominant position and it has the best technology. Switching costs are there. Network effect. Does it have any network effect? The more appraisers are using the platform, the more lenders want to use the platform, the more AMCs want to use the platform. Fantastic mode growing every day. Brand. Does it have the brand? Brand is not as important, but it also has a brand. So it has the moat from brand, network effect, switching costs, and it small competitive advantage from the technology. And it also has some patents. So it has all of this quality assigned to its revenues. High margins, sticky revenues, growing revenues. And Voxter is trading for about one or two times revenues for 2022. And Tattooed Chef is trading for four times really weak revenues. If anybody ever told you the markets are efficient, uh, you should start rethinking that. And now, why is this such a discrepancy? Because Tattooed Chef is on NASDAQ and Voxter is on TSX Venture and it will be on NASDAQ in Q2 of this year. So now, you can see how drunk investors on NASDAQ can be when it comes to growth companies. They don't care if their revenues are good. They don't care if margins are great. They don't care if the company is losing money. It's growing. We're going to assign it high valuation. And then you have a company like this trading on TSXV. Nobody even wants to touch it. So what do you think is going to happen when Voxter is going to go from TSX Venture to NASDAQ and it's going to show this huge growth to which growth investors are addicted to, like drug addicts are addicted to heroin. They're going to see this growth exploding and they're going to see that this company is trading for one times revenues. What do you think is going to happen to the stock when that happens? I think you know the answer to this question. So anyway, I wanted to show you in this video some of the qualitative aspects of revenues, how to think about revenues, whether they're good or bad, because in my opinion, high quality revenues will always be valued higher than low quality revenues. See, the problem is that when companies are losing money and growing fast, people tend to forget. They're just drunk on the growth. They'll pay anything for it. They'll say, well, but Tattoo Chef's products are showing up at more and more stores. Therefore, they're growing and the stock shouldn't be going down. Whoa, 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 whoa. Separate yourself from it. First of all, think about, do I even want to own this business? Is this a quality business to own? Are the margins good enough to generate some kind of bottom line in the future? Just because today the, the company is losing money, how much is it going to be making in the future? If the margins are so low, what do you think the net income is going to be as a percentage of revenues? It's going to be tiny. So at some point, it's going to trade on cash flow. At some point, it's going to trade on some kind of PE. But what kind of PE will you have to put on it in order to justify the price of a billion or two or three? I'm not saying it's not going to reach that. But if you're assigning, you know, 20, 30 multiple to revenues that are so low quality revenues with no moat, it's probably not going to work out for you that well. Anyway, that's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed this. Thank you very much for watching.